Well, hey guys, happy Bible reading to you. Today we're reading Acts chapter 13. And now as we dive in, I'm wondering, do you remember the very first time God used you to share the good news of Jesus? I mean, that, that moment when you felt your hands begin to sweat, a lump start to form in your throat, and waves of adrenaline course through your veins. You know, I'll never forget the first time that I shared Jesus with a friend. Um, me and another girl were helping out at our church craft fair, and I was just 10 years old at this at the time, and this girl came with her grandma, and even though we were supposed to be helping, we spent most of our time oogling over the handcrafted American doll clothes. But while we decided what our limited resources could purchase for our prized dolls, it was apparent that not only had she never been to church, but she had never heard about the love and freedom found in Christ. And I knew somebody needed to tell her. I just didn't think that that somebody was me. But as the day went on, I realized that if I didn't tell her right then, who would? So while sitting in the church lobby and eating homemade cream puffs, I tried my best to tell her what it meant to follow Jesus and to have our sins forgiven by him. And with a shaky voice, I asked if she wanted to have a relationship with Jesus. And to my amazement, she said yes, and I tried my best to remember the prayers I'd heard every week in kids' church, and I had her repeat after me just like our kids' pastor did, and I had no clue if I did it right or not. But I knew something amazing transpired in that moment. As soon as we were done, she rushed to go tell her grandma what Jesus did for her. And her grandma cried as she hugged her young granddaughter. And that day, something changed in me, not just in her. And I couldn't put it into words quite yet, but I had just witnessed someone crossing from death into life. And then I realized that there was joy in that moment that my 10-year-old self couldn't contain. And I knew that I wanted more and I wanted to keep doing that very thing. We've all had those moments, or maybe we've been praying to have those moments. And in Acts chapter 13, we see this very same thing unfold for Paul. Paul is commissioned, sent out by God as a missionary, and then used to recount the history of Israel, placing the coming of Jesus into historical perspective, and making it clear that Jesus was the ultimate fulfillment of God's promises. What a first sermon, huh? <laughs> And the result in verse 49 is that the word of the Lord spread throughout the whole region. And you know, there's so much that could be said about this entire chapter. But what struck me the most was the mention of three different callings. Of course, most prominent is Paul's. But as he recalls all that led to the coming Messiah, two others are deemed important to be shared. David's calling and John the Baptist's. But notice the language God spoke through Paul. Acts 13, 25, it says, Now as John was completing his mission, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not the one, but one is coming after me, and I am not worthy to untie the sandals on his feet. And then Acts 13, 36, it says, Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors, and his body decayed. Now did you catch that? John completing his mission. David, once he had finished serving God's purposes. You see, it's clear here that God has an assignment for his people, missions that he calls us to carry out until the very end. And it's not for these select few, though it is worth mentioning that they fulfilled their God-given purpose. May the very same be said of us. When Abby fulfilled her purpose for her generation, that's when she saw Jesus face to face. Now you may be sitting there saying, Abby, these guys are on a totally different playing field. We're talking about a king here and a guy who lived in the desert baptizing people while eating locusts for breakfast and another guy who was a missionary. I'm just a... Or God won't use me like that because... You fill in the blank. And yes... While these were extraordinary men, there is one commonality amongst them all. Acts 13.22, it says, I have found David, the son of Jesse, to be a man after my own heart who will carry out my will. And again, Acts 13.24, John proclaimed a baptism of repentance. 
And yet again, Paul preaching in Acts 13, 38, he says, Therefore let it be known to you, brothers and sisters, that through this man Jesus, forgiveness of sins is being proclaimed to you. Do you see it? The one factor that brings them all together. Obedience. The one thing all these men had in common was obedience to the one who sent them. Willingness to carry out his will. Willingness to proclaim an unpopular message of repentance. Willingness to, to declare Jesus as the only one to forgive. Obedience. Obedience is what they all had in common. And if we said it once at, at Church of the Front Range, we'll say it at least a hundred more times today. Our mission is the great commission. And it's the mission that he's called every single one of us to take part in through obedience. And so as we reflect on them completing their mission, it's time for us to respond with our mission. How is God calling us to obey the Great Commission? Who is God calling you to share Jesus with this week? Maybe it's an invite to a weekend gathering or to one of our Christmas Eve services at Church of the Front Range. Maybe it's to invite someone over for dinner with you and your family so that you can actively share the love you have received from Christ. Maybe he's calling you to serve or volunteer in another capacity. And no matter what it is, ask him for your assignment for today, for this week. He longs to use you to be a dealer of hope in a broken world. So thank you guys so much for spending time with me. I love you all. I look forward to seeing you next time.